Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will read class 8 supplementary book chapter 1, How the Camel Got His Hump. We all have seen a camel and its hump, right? What is the hump for? No, it's not for storing water. Let's read in this chapter how the camel got his hump and how is it useful for it. In this part, we will read that the world has just begun and the animals were working for humans. There was one lazy animal that did nothing and said nothing but hum. Even the clever jinn was at his wit's end. At his wit's end means completely puzzled, did not know what to do. So the story starts from the beginning of the world when the world has just begun and animals used to work for human. While all the animals worked for human, there was a lazy animal who did nothing and he would just say hum. Even the clever jinn, jinn is a magical character which fulfills your wishes. So even the clever jinn was completely puzzled what to do with this animal. In the beginning when the world was new and the animals were just beginning to work for men, there was a camel and he lived in the middle of hauling desert. Hauling means vast desert. Because he did not want to work, he ate sticks and thorns and prickles and when anybody spoke to him, he said hum, just hum and no more. So the story starts from when the world has just begun and animals used to work for human. At that time, there was an animal, camel, who used to live in the middle of the vast desert because he did not want to work at all. Whole day he would just eat sticks and thorns and prickles. Prickles are also small thorny plants. And when anybody told him to do any work, he would just say hum and nothing more. Presently, the horse came. Presently means soon. Presently, the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and said, Camel, O oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Saddle is a leather seat on the back of horse where people can sit. So soon a camel came to him on the Monday morning and the camel said, Camel, O oh camel, come and trot. Trot means run or walk. The walk of a horse is called trot. So horse said, Camel, come and walk like us. Hum said the camel and the horse went away and told the men. So the camel didn't say anything but hum. So the horse went away and told about this to the man. Presently, the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Fetch means take or hold. So after horse, dog came and dog also said, Camel, come and carry things like rest of us. Take and carry things like rest of us. Hum, said the camel and the dog went away and told the man. So to dog also the camel said hum. So the dog went away and told about this to the man. Presently the ox came to him with a yoke on his neck. Yoke is a long piece of wood that is fixed across the neck of two animals so that they can pull heavy loads together. So it is generally put across the neck of uh, animals like ox who plow the field. So then soon the ox came and said, camel o oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. So ox plows a field. So he said, plow like rest of us. Again the camel said, hump and the ox went away and told about this to the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, 303, I am very sorry for you, but that hum thing in the desert can't work or he would have been here by now. So I am going to leave him alone and you must work double time to make up for it. Now the man called all three animals, the horse, the ox and the dog and told them that this hum thing in the middle of the desert, he doesn't want to work. He's not going to do any work. Otherwise he would have been here. So I'm leaving him alone. I'm not telling him anything. Now you three will have to do double time. You three will have to work double time to make up for the work lost due to the camel. That made the three very angry. They held a panchayat on the edge of the desert and the camel came chewing cud and laughing on at them. Then he said hum and went away again. Now these three animals, since they had to work double time, they were very angry and they held a panchayat on the edge of the desert. They held a meeting. The camel also came in the meeting, chewing 
his grass as usual and laughing at these animals and again he said humph and went away. Presently there came along the jinn who was in charge of all deserts rolling in a cloud of dust. Soon a jinn who was the in charge of the desert came there. It was rolling in the cloud of dust as it is the appearance of jinn always rolling in the cloud of dust. So the jinn who was in charge of desert came. Jinn of all deserts said the horse. Is it right for anyone to be idle? Idle means not to do any work. So the horse said, Jinn, do you think it is right for anyone not to do any work? Certainly not. It's not, said the Jinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your desert with a long neck and long legs and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't throw. Then horse said that there's a thing in the middle of desert with long neck and long legs and he has not done even a bit of work since Monday morning. He won't even trot. Phew, said the jinn whistling. That's my camel. What does he say about it? So as soon as the horse said a thing with long neck and long legs, the jinn understood that it's camel and he said, what does he say about the work? He says hum and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the jinn. I'll hum him. If you will kindly wait a minute. Then the ox said that he just says hump. And the jinn said okay. Then I will hump him. Hump him means I will deal with him appropriately. And I will put him to the right path. Then the jinn said kindly wait for a minute. Till I set him in the right path. Now second part we will study that the jinn remonstrated with the camel. Who said hump. Remonstrated means protested or complained to the camel. The camel's beautiful back suddenly grew a lump which was the camel's hump. The jinn assured the camel his hump would always be help, be a help and not a hindrance. Hindrance means obstacle. So the jinn went to the camel to teach him a lesson or to talk about the matter. And then camel's beautiful back suddenly grew a lump which was camel's hump. And the jinn assured the hump that, uh, assured the camel that this is not going to be an obstacle in his work. In fact, it will be a help. The jinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak and took a walk across the desert and found the camel looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. So the jinn went to the camel which was looking itself in the water, which was looking its reflection in the water. My friend said the jinn, what's this I hear of you doing no work? The jinn sat down with his chin in his hand while the camel looked at his re own reflection in the pool of water. So Jinn asked the camel that I'm hearing that you're not doing any work. Camel was there looking himself, his reflection in the water. You have given the three extra work ever since Monday morning, all on account of your idleness, said the Jinn. And he went on thinking with his chin in his hand. So the jinn told him the matter that uh, other animals have got extra work because you are idle. And then he kept on saying, hump, said the camel. The camel again said nothing but hump. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the jinn. You might say it once too often. I want you to work. So the jinn said that if I were you, I would not say hump again and again. You should go to work at once. I want you to work. And the camel said hump again. But no sooner had he said it, than he saw his back that he was so proud of puffing up and puffing up into a great big hump. So as soon as the camel said hump, his back started puffing up. His back started growing, which was which the back which camel was so proud of. It became a, and a hump was formed, a big hump was formed on his back. Do you see that? said the camel. That's your very own hump that you have brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday and you have done no work since Monday. When the work begins, now you are going to work. So the jinn said that you have developed your own hump by just saying hump and not doing any work. Now today is Thursday and you have not done any work since Monday. When the work begins, you have to go back to work. How can I, said the camel, with this hump on my back? Now the camel said that, how can I work? I have a hump on my back. That has a purpose, said the jinn. 
All because you miss those three days, you will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your hum. And don't you ever say, I never did anything for you. Come out of desert and go to the, uh, go to the tree and behave. Then the jinn said, this hump is for a purpose. All because you have missed three days of work, you will be able to work for three days without eating because your hump will help you. And don't you ever say again that I didn't do anything for you because I have given you the hump. Now go to the desert and join those three animals and behave. And the camel went away to join the tree. And from that day to this day, this, the camel always wears a hump. We call it hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world. And he has never yet learned how to behave. So from that day on, the camel joined the three animals and he always had hump on his back. Now, out of respect and not to offend the camel, we, call, we just call it hump and not hump. And the camel has not yet covered up those three days because he still can work. Uh, he still has hump on his back, which help him to store fats. So it is not for storing water. The hump is for storing fats. And camels still has not, have not learned how to behave. You can see camel sitting idle, lazily uh, with his hump on his back in the desert. The story is by Rudyard Kipling. It has been abridged. That means shortened a bit. So children, now you understood how the camel got his hump. Now this is a fictional story, of course, but it teaches us a lesson and it gives us information, right? Now you can go through the question answers here. Pause the video. Go through the question answers and check. Here are the question answers. If you have any doubt regarding the chapter, just post a comment and I will reply. Thank you. Bye-bye.